Hello, it's Thursday, July 6th, 2017, and as of this recording, I'm still depressed, but I'm not dead. I don't sleep. Hey, the welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time to download the show and give it a listen. I appreciate it so very much. Anybody who's new to the show, hey, welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm not sure. I'd like to know. I'm curious to know how you found the show. If you have it in you and uh, don't mind helping a guy out, just drop me a line. Let me know how you found the show, what you think of it, things I could do better, things I could do uh, more frequently, less frequently. Uh, anybody listening, if you hear my voice, send me some feedback, please. Now, some of you are wondering, how do I do that? Well, you can get a hold of me in many different ways. You can email me at jamolke at gmail.com, on Twitter at jamolke, facebook.com slash jamolke, www.jamolke.info, as well as the text phone number line. You can give a try, 248-648-1419. Drop me a line. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how I'm doing. Uh, whatever. Tell me how the weather is. Let's chat. So I'm recording this uh, early on Thursday morning. I have a job interview today to work at a kind of a local uh, chain of co-ops called Mississippi Market here in the Twin Cities area. I'm not totally convinced about the job. I like the co-op model. I'm not a big fan of the, well, we don't need to get into that. Uh, um, But anyway, it's so it's a job interview. So even if I don't get this job, take this job. I have, uh, it'll be the first interview I've had in some time. So wish me luck. I think, uh, we'll see. I'll let you guys know how that goes. I'm supposed to be having another interview, uh, to be a merchandiser for, uh, Procter and Gamble, which would be kind of fun, uh, going into a store and setting up, you know, I don't know what's a Procter and Gamble as a crest or Colgate or one of those, right? One of the C's I think they make. So we'll see about that. You know, a few other things. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've mentioned that medical bills are piling up and uh, it would be nice if we had a little more income income coming in. And uh, I'm blaming the Abilify, but next week I'm going to talk about uh, my discussion I had with Alex just yesterday about uh, medication versus something else. Um, I don't want to get into it too much because I don't know a lot about it. Um, but regardless, I'm feeling uh, more energetic, somewhat f- trending towards how I remember feeling in 2014, the year of me, uh, when I lost a bunch of weight, started running, met the love of my life, all that. So I'm feeling positive about that. I am also very aware of the end of 2014 when everything went downhill fast, uh, so that's got me a little bit, a little bit anxious, maybe, but I, I don't dwell on it that much. Uh, as much as uh, I kind of couch that in thinking about how I'm feeling now, and is this, is this really the same as then? Is this different? Is this, you know, whatever 2014 was, is it the same uh, neurologically, or is it uh, medicinal? Um, and I'll take either one. I just would like to. Uh, have more information on it so I can plan out the end of this year better than I planned out the end of 2014. Uh, so yeah, so kind of maybe a short show today. I don't know. Um, I've got some more music for you guys. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not really sure how that previous podcast went over when I did the song with Graydon Square. Uh, not that I did a song with Graydon Square. The podcast (laughs) was about a song. Uh, it's not one of my highest rated, highest downloaded shows, but uh, I heard another song and I'd kind of like to share it with you guys. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. Let's just uh, hop into it and see what, 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 huh? So let's tell a few short stories, um, kind of vague short stories, no names, uh, 
not even genders or sex or uh, I, I don't know what term to use anymore. Um, basically, we're, let's, we're just going to describe some different people and, you know, just see if you can think of someone in your life who you have, who fits these descriptions. Uh, so let's say you have a coworker and this person calls off to work all the time. They're maybe not once a week, but maybe every other week. Um, you know, there seems they're always right on the border of getting reprimanded for calling off without personal days versus as soon as they accrue a personal day or even half a personal day, they, they call off. They don't show up to work. Um, when they're there, they don't really interact with you or anyone else. They, uh, kind of just do their work, head down, maybe doesn't seem to smile very much. But on top of that, like their work is never done right. And, you know, you've done your work great and it looks fantastic or it has the right information, whatever it may be. Uh, and this person really just kind of louses it up and, you know, things suffer for it because of it. You know, this person, has, you know, has snide remarks every now and then where it sounds like maybe they're kind of trying to be helpful, but it's really, it's kind of insulting or, or whatnot. You know, so this is just a person that grates you the wrong way, you and everybody else at work, to the point where all you really want is this person to just go away, right? You, you hope they get fired for the attendance thing, hope they get fired because their work performance isn't that great. And, you know, you don't really care what it is. You just hope, you know, as long as they go away and you don't have to see them anymore then you're fine with that. Let's say you have a special someone in your life, a, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a spouse, whatever. You have a good job and you always pay for dates or when you guys go out, or if you're married, you, you, you pay for most of the bills. Um, you know, you've taken them on vacation. You've said, hey, let's go to whatever, Bahamas. Yeah, let's go. I've got money. Let's go. I, oh, I already got two tickets. Let's go. After a while, you start looking around and seeing you know, thinking about that person and you wonder, you ask yourself, what, what, what am I getting from that person? And you think, and you're like, well, um, hmm. Oh, what about, no, no, huh. So you realize you're not getting anything from that person and they don't seem to notice it. Uh, they don't seem to care that, that that's what's happening. You know, you, you, you know, if, you, if you're married to that person, you may find yourself getting a divorce. If it's uh, just a, a, a courting relationship, boyfriend-girlfriend type of thing, you're probably going to move on and say, hey, I, you know, I need somebody who is giving as much as taking. Let's say someone else, a friend of yours, who is always canceling plans on you. Uh, or when they show up for a prearranged plan, they, they always seem kind of distant, not really present. Um, you know, their eyes are kind of glossed over. It looks like they're not focusing on, on you or anything around. And then they start to forget things that you've told them. They forget your birthday. They, you know, eventually they stop calling you. Uh, but maybe once every few months or even worse, when you call them and they don't answer, you leave a voicemail, they don't return your call. Um, you're probably going to realize that it's time to move on, time to, to, to spend your energy on someone who uh, appreciates uh, and, and shows that they appreciate your friendship. Um, maybe you have a sibling that never calls you. Uh, the rare occasions that you do see them at family events, holidays, things like that, they don't talk to you. The only time they really speak up, you know, in family situations is to correct somebody who has said something wrong or maybe even just has a differing opinion from them. Um, you know, they, your, your kids, so their nieces and nephews, when they were babies, toddlers, young children, they always seemed to have time for and play with. And you thought, wow, look at, wow, this person really loves my kids. Uh, but, you know, they get older and as they hit their teens, it seems like that time it just isn't around anymore. And suddenly your kids are left in, left in the dark from, from this person, from this aunt or uncle. Uh, you know, one other, let's say, you know, think back to your high school days and, you know, you've got a group of friends in high school. Uh, one member of the group is, is they're helpful, they're polite, they're funny, um, you know, all, all those kind of things that you like to have in, in a high school friendship. Um, they seem smart, they don't slough off, you know, classwork, nothing like that, but they always seem to keep everybody at arm's length. Um, 
you know, you realize that even though this person has all these good traits, you don't really know that much about them. They don't really offer up opinions about anything um, and things like that. So, you know, you graduate, you, you say you're going to keep in touch. You try to keep in touch for a little bit. A month or so goes by and, you know, hey, we're keeping in touch. We're, you know, when I was in school, it would have been <laughs> writing letters, maybe calling on the phone, but long distance was a thing then. Uh, today, maybe you email, Snapchat, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever kids are doing these days. Um, and then all of a sudden they go just radio silent, just poof. You don't hear from them anymore. Maybe, maybe you see some, you know, posts on social networks from them, but nothing specific to, you know, you or that group of friends from high school. Um, a couple of years later, they pop back up into your feed. Say, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much time has gone by. I'm so sorry. Let's let's connect. Let's re let's get back together, uh, and see you know catch up on what we're doing." Um, and you know maybe you get together one time, but pretty much that's just an empty, uh, empty desire, and you don't really ever connect again. Um, then a few more years go by, and you're in conversation with that, somebody in that group of friends and, and that person's name comes up and you think, wow, um, who? Oh, oh, right. Yeah. That person. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. I haven't heard from them in a while. What? Well, geez. Are they even still alive? I, I don't know. Um, I, I just forgotten all about them. Uh, so there we've got those, these groups of people. Um, so now what I want you to do is put all those people together into one person. And not only that, make them your spouse, your significant other, your best friend. So now that you've got this one conglomerate person, what I want you to do is take away all those bad traits that we just talked about. You don't see them. You've never seen them in this person. In fact, you see them as just this amazingly wonderful person who has so much to offer and does offer day in and day out. Someone that you feel fortunate to just even know, much less have as your best friend or your spouse or your love of your life. Now I want you to take that one conglomerate person and make it you and make it that's the way you see yourself. That's the way you see yourself. And that's the way you know that everybody sees you. You got that? So what we've just described is my version of a major depressive disorder. That's a little bit about the way that I feel about myself versus how other people see me. And I know that this is not something special just to me. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people out there feeling the same way, going day in and day out, feeling like they're a leech, a pariah, uh, an outcast. You know, they just feel as if they're the worst of the people they know that wow, what, what, what value do I bring to anything? And also, I want you to think of that in terms of suicide and the thought process of someone like me waking up in the morning and deciding today's the day. And you don't have to spend the time thinking about the other people in your life who it will impact if you're successful, if you're not successful, at committing suicide. And that's the way it feels. That all these different people, your friends, your co-workers, your high school friends, um, your nieces, your nephews, even you translate that into your kids. You already know that all of these people would be better off without you or they believe that they'd be better off without you. And that's the mind that I had two and a half years ago. And that's the mind that I'm trying so hard not to get back into. So, you know, I don't know if I brought that about very clearly and I'm not trying to get anyone to think, oh, oh my gosh, what's wrong with JP? What, oh my gosh, feel bad for me. No, I'm trying to help others who maybe don't know what that might seem like or, or look like in someone's head. That's what it can look like. And some of you are, some of you I know are in that space right now. And after you hear this, I want you to send me a message so we can chat. Um, others of you have been in that space before. 
And hopefully this helps you understand that it, it wasn't just you that other people go through this. Other people go through this and fail at their attempt or maybe don't go through with their attempt at all. And they grow up to have a podcast, a uh, worldwide podcast of uh, <laughs> tens of fans around the world. So you're not alone. There's nothing. It's a big world. Seven billion people. If we say, what did we say last week? Some three to six percent of the world have major depressive disorder. So that's still a lot, folks. Seven billion people. Six percent of that is what? Forty, four hundred and twenty million. Is that right? Wow. So while I'm recording this, I don't, I can't recall what the the percentage is of folks with major depressive disorder in the in the United States. I think it's three to six percent somewhere. One of those. Um, so let's, if we extrapolate that to the world, let's, let's take a little bit off of that. So let's say it's two to 4%, even if it's just 2%, that's 140 million people right now in the world who are having thoughts like that. Um, so you're not alone. You're probably are not feeling anything that someone else hasn't felt just by sheer number of people. So please reach out. Talk to somebody. Message me. Call 1-800-APE-TALK. Get some help there. Um, sometimes it just feels like everything is so phenomenally awful and there's never going to be a way out. And there can always be a way out. You just might not know where that way is right now. Okay, so I said there was going to be a song. Uh, let's try to lighten the mood a little bit, although the topic of the song isn't at all uh, light and cheery. Uh, it, it's from an artist uh, who goes by MC Lars, and he's an artist that I came across uh, listening to Graydon Square Radio on Google Play Music. Uh, he's He does a lot of different things, and he's an he's, uh, intelligent artist, rapper. He's a hip hop R and B or maybe not R and B hip hop rapper. Um and, you know, words like, you know, evolution come up in his raps quite frequently and sexual selection and Darwin and things like that. Uh so I'm a sucker for that, so I was hooked. And one day while I was listening, this song came on. It's called Twenty Three. And I only kinda half heard it the first time uh, and since it was on Google Play Music and it was on my Google Home, I wasn't really sure what it was. So I had to wait a while to for it to come back around because I wasn't even sure who it was singing uh, anything. wasn't even sure what the name was. But it's a song that he wrote about a guy that he met in college who had depression and was really, really struggling with it. And... If I understand it correctly, and I'm sorry, MC Lars, if I have this wrong, uh, this gentleman, Pat, Patrick, was a, a homosexual. He was gay, and he just was unable to deal with that. Um, not that he was ashamed of being homosexual. I don't believe that was going on, but he, he knew he couldn't tell his parents, and he was forced to come, you know, grow up keeping it a secret from everybody, and that kind of pressure and torment of having to keep that secret and not, you know, act on what his body was telling him that he wanted to do. Um, and I can't imagine how awful that is. Um, and eventually it, it just became too much. And this young man, Pat, took his own life. And if, if we're to listen to the song, he Last thing he did was he talked to his mom on the phone and then decided that it was time to to end all the pain and all the suffering that had just grown and grown and grown from this one thing, this one fundamental part of who he was that he was forced to um, keep in check, maybe? I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Um but just think if like if you you know whatever like blue eyes you know nobody can know you have blue eyes how how awful would your life get for that and how long would it take you to to just 
be miserable and to change. We think about the, the, the fundamental changes he needed to make in his life so that he could keep that secret of being gay. That's, I, I can't imagine what that is and having to fight your, yourself each and every day to keep up the appearance of someone who is not gay and, you know, I'm sure want to tell everybody, um, you know, just, just to, to, to share it. That's who you are. You know, I'm whatever I'm, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to compare it to. Um, but you know, I'm sure this young man's life was just distraught and, um, I don't know. Um, so when you listen to the song, there, there is a part and, the, and this is, um, this is kind of key to a lot of folks with depression. You'll, you'll hear a part towards the end where Lars is talking to somebody in his dorm room. And, uh, he says, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a good friend of mine. This is Patrick Wood. And Pat says, what up, Lars? Lars says, what's up, Pat? How you doing, man? Lars says, good. What do you think of me having my recording equipment take up three quarters of our small room in the Kimball dorm? He says, it's not a problem, man. I love you. Lars says, I love you too, Pat. And you listen to, to Pat's voice and it's it's amazing how happy and cheery he sounds when we know from looking back now, hindsight's twenty twenty, and, and I think I think Lars knew at the time, but how miserable he must have been dealing with this depression, dealing with this um, this kind of societal forced identity dissonance, and um, yeah, uh, I just wanted I wanted to play the song for you guys. You may or may not like it. Um, I've listened to it many times now. Uh, one time, uh, it's it's the only time I can remember crying in the past several months was listening to this in the car and singing along to it. So it's very impactful to me. And hopefully you get a little something about it. It's it's a nice song. Uh, I did contact Lars and ask him, hey, can I, I want to, I want to do this. I want to put the song on my podcast and talk about it a little bit. And he said, yeah, sure, man, whatever you want to do, just, just, just go ahead and do it. Um, he did ask me to promote his, uh, Patreon, which, uh, is a, a donation type, uh, deal. And so if you're interested, I will put that, I will put show notes up for this, this episode. Um, and you can go check out his stuff. Um, and this, this is his job, right? So it's, it sounds like donation, but it's really, this is how he makes money. I'm not asking you guys to spend any money. Uh, I admitted to him that I, I just don't have the funds right now to do anything to help you. And he's like, that's cool, man, whatever. Just, uh, you know, thanks for listening and thanks for for putting the word out there. So he asked me to mention that. I will mention it. I will link to it. Um, you guys are all adults and whatever you're comfortable with, just be comfortable. So thanks again, everybody, for listening. Uh, Lars, thanks for letting me use the song. Uh, great work, man. You you rock. Yeah, sorry, Lars. My my listeners rock more than you uh, to me. But you're pretty high up there, so that, that lets you know how important my listeners are. Uh, everybody, that's enough babbling. Everyone, be safe. Be well. I don't sleep, because sleep is the cousin of death. Down the hall. There's a kid that I know He's kinda quirky so I say hello He's so sarcastic but he's always right Working on those problem sets late into the night Mad magazines sit piled by his bed A million billion thoughts going off through his head We bike to class in the autumn rain He tells me that he's fine but I know he's in pain Dad, I miss you, dude. It's so hard to say goodbye. And you're a blessed winner. You were tired of the lie. Monoxide in the bathroom, but the door was locked. We were always there for you. You could have called and talked. I felt guilty and alone and so sick when I discovered you did it in Berlin. You just talked to your mother. I guess it was too much. Depression, disillusion. Maybe suicide's an answer, but it wasn't and the solution. I wish that you
together one night on El Camino on the bench by the bus stop hiding from El Nino you told me your secret I just sat there in shock you couldn't tell your parents you couldn't break that lock cognitive dissonance trapped in your shell depression and regression made your life a living hell the pain was too intense the fence too strong to break so you went to Germany it was too much to take you came back broken hearted distracted by the dream the worlds collided now college wasn't what it seemed you went back to Berlin to find yourself once more they broke down the door and found you lying on the floor I took the Amtrak up the coast your mom met me at the station I went to see your house and photos of your graduation we drove to your grave the tombstone where you lay your freshman yearbooks by your bed and your rooms in disarray This is Patrick Wood. What's up, Lars? What's up, Pat? How you doing, man? Good. What do you think of me having my recording equipment take up three quarters of our small room in the Kimball dorm? It's no problem, man. I love you. I love you too, Pat. Thanks, Lars. Pat Wood, hey, that's you. 